I'm Director Murray. Um, it's my honor to be the chair of the Greenway Conservancy Board um, and to welcome you to our annual meeting. Uh, this has been a one interesting year, um, to say the least. Uh, at uh, last year's annual meeting, Occupy Boston was about three days old. Um, I made the remark that it was messy, and indeed it was. Um, we had a very trying two and a half months on Dewey Square. Um, where Occupy stayed longer than we'd all hoped. Um, and we ended up um, having to spend a considerable amount of money getting Dewey back. But I think that uh, people thought that we, that it was a good, great job of getting it back in shape really quickly. Um, so we were proud of that. We were proud that we defended the um, right to have open space in Boston and to be welcoming to all and the rule of law that and have free speech anywhere, but free camping has its limits. And so we um, established that in the courts, and we were, we were um, glad to have that established for the Greenway and for the city. Um, we then moved on to um, Bill. Hi, Mike, come over here. Um, we then moved on to uh, January and February, where we, um, as we were planning for the. 2012 season, um, we were uh, asked to do a five-year plan by the Secretary of the Department of Transportation. Happy to do that, um, but concerned about our public-private partnership, that it's very important to our operation. We are known nationally, um, to some extent internationally, for a great public-private partnership and for a park that is becoming a world-class park. We hope to continue that partnership. We hope to continue it well. We hope to continue it as respectful partners with the state and with the community. Um, I hope you've read our five-year plan uh, that we did and that we filed on July 31st with the secretary. Um, that is our attempt to say, okay, things change. We know it. We know the state is in very bad condition financially. We understand that everything changes. And so we understand that we need to think differently, and we will, and we, we are. Um, we are looking at different forms of income, as any of you who read the five-year plan can see. Um, we're looking to try to reduce the state um, funds that, that we require. But it all requires that everybody be at the table with everything. Um, and we are hoping that in the next three to six months, we will have a instead of a plan, we will have a real strategy um, that we can agree with with the state um, and with our abutters and with the city and the state as a whole, and that we can go forward. It was a challenging year in the last fiscal year, FY12, and it will continue to be a challenging year in FY13. Um, we know that, we respect it, we believe we have a fabulous staff um, that has pulled off 2012 um, and that will help us pull off 2013. Um, among the staff, our fabulous volunteers, and our board volunteers, and in the past our Greenway Leadership Council volunteers, um, we have, um, we've begun, we hope we've well begun, um, but we are in a critical year, and we ask for your support during that year. Um, one of the things that happened in, um, in July, of, of just two months ago, was that the legislature passed a, uh, a new legislation affecting the Greenway, it's chapter 242. In it, it requires that all our meetings be public meetings. Uh, it used to be, for those of you who remember, we had four public meetings a year. Um, many of you were good enough to come. Um, all our meetings will be open now. Uh, this is the first board meeting we've had since that, um, since that legislation was passed. Um, the open meeting law requires a few procedures, so I just want to, um, to be clear. Um, formal notice that the meeting is being videotaped. Matt Conti um, uh, from the North End is videotaping it, but I do want you to know that, that everything is on the record here. Um, there is no remote participation tonight, so there's no, nobody on the phone in some little box. Um, it, um, it, that's, that's, we are able to participate by phone, both the public and the, the board, but um, there is no such thing right now. No one, needed to, no one told us we needed to do that. 
And all votes will be taken by roll call um, of the duly elected board members. Um, in the past, you've seen us say, all in favor, um, we will do a roll call as required by open meeting law. <coughs> um, the minutes of the meeting and meeting presentations will be posted on our website within 10 days of the meeting. Shirley, am I not, am I talking too fast or not loud enough? Louder would be good, although maybe it's my hearing. Okay, no, I, I can see you le leaning in. Okay, um, is that better? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, minutes of the meetings will be posted within 10, 10 days of the, of the meeting, and all board members have received the open meeting um, law materials. The Attorney General's office is working with us to do um, training for the board. Um, which we hope will be done in the next month or so um, because our legislation is a little bit different in terms of how open meeting law is conducted. Um, so that's all, that's all the sort of like, you know, the little print at the bottom of the page. That, that's what I needed to tell you for the open, on open meeting. Um, I'd now like to move to the business of the meeting. Um, first of all, we'd like to approve the minutes from July 24th, 2012, the public meeting. Um, that the board members have. Um, may I have a vote to approve, or a motion to approve? Second. Second. Okay. And uh, may I have uh, yay or nay? Chris <coughs> Finch? Yay. Chris Fincham? Yay. Bob Gore? Yay. Phil Griffiths? Yay. Suzanne LeBoy? Yay. Chris Manfredi? Yay. Georgia Murray? Yay. Young Park? Yeah. Helen Chin Schlichty? Yeah. Mary Ann Sudan? Yay. Yeah. Okay. Um, minutes approved. Do I need to do anything more? Will you also describe how you will be complying with the public record law? The public record law we will comply with in the legislation as of January 1st, 2013. Um, we have a lot to do. So we haven't figured out how we are going to comply with the public record law yet. Um, we're working on it, but we, the staff is working on it, and we don't have the answer to that yet. But we will, and we will have, we will comply by January 1st, 2013. Okay. Uh, one of the things that the legislation of July did was that it, um, it, we added people to the board, we took people off the board, and we um, had the Greenway Leadership Council expire. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is to honor those people who served, and um, we unfortunately, some, many of them couldn't be here tonight, um, but one of our retiring board members, who's been here since the very beginning, the, the last of the Mohicans here, um, Marianne Sudan was part of the original Greenway Conservancy <coughs> Board. Um, she has been wonderful throughout my three-year tenure here, and she's just been a terrific leader, um, both in the real estate community and just as a mentor to so many and as just sound advice always. So Marianne, we will miss you mightily. Um, I just wanted you to take this as a thank you. But we know where to find you. <laughs> uh, the other retiring members are Mike Cantalupa. He was the chair of the GLC, and by that designation, he was a member of the board. Um, Ed Schlossberg um, and Gloria Larson. Um, those three could not be present today. Um, but send their best, and we will send your best and our best to them. Um, the members of the Greenway Leadership Council, um, who really were, most of them, the original members of the Greenway Leadership Council, because the Greenway Leadership Council is, is younger than the board. Um, we, we really hope that they will stay in touch. Um, we know at least one of them definitely will. Um, um, Mike Cantalupo was on the Greenway Leadership Council. Um, James Chan. There you are, James. Right. Thank you, James. Francine Dan, I haven't seen Francine. No? Okay. Um, Deb Spirio, I've seen. Deb, thank you. And yeah, um, Kristen, I saw come in. Kristen Scarzani, thank you so much. And 
And Commissioner Ed Lambert, who was really trying to be here tonight but couldn't in the end. He has a few things to do these days. Um, Jason Howley, who is um, not able to be here tonight. Donna Frenny, and Tony Pollock, Commissioner Pollock. Was, well, I'm, I'm hoping we're going to be able to say thank you to Tony in person because I know she's trying to get here. Uh, so that's, those are the folks leaving us. Um, the folks coming to us are important too. And as um, many of you know, the legislation um, expanded our board to 21. Um, some of those nominations are from groups or are from elected officials who have not yet appointed their member. Um, so we are building the board back up with the appointees, um, but we're happy to be able to report um, this evening that we have our first from a neighborhood council, um, James Chan, um, back again. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we all know well, and we're delighted that the Chinatown Neighborhood Council nominated James, um, and that he's going from GLC to board. Um, so thank you, James, for being willing to serve. We, we are thrilled to have that. Um, we have Clinton Bench, whom, whom you, you know before, um, as the uh, appointment of Secretary Davey, and Phil Griffiths. Um, who you know from before, who is the appointment of the Secretary of Energy and Environmental Affairs. So um, may I have a motion to approve our three board members? So Second. And Amy, will you call the roll? Yes. Clinton Bench? Yeah. Uh, Chris Finch? Yeah. Bob Gore? Yay. Bill Griffiths? Yeah. Suzanne LaVoy? Yay. Chris Manfredi? Yay. Georgia Murray? Yay. Young Park? Yay. Ellen Chinshifty? Yay. And Mary Ann Sudan? Yay. Welcome. Come on up. <laughs> um, the, uh, we, we, we have several vacancies. As you look at us, and we're supposed to be 21, you, you can see that. Um, we have two from the governor, whom we hope will be forthcoming. We have one more from the mayor. And we have five more from neighborhood councils. Um, and so we're, we look forward, I've spoken to a few of you tonight um, about how that nomination process will move forward. We hope it's robust and that we have a full board um, by our next public meeting, which right now is scheduled for February, but that might change. So, um, so if any of you are on any of those neighborhood groups um, that are nominating people to our board, please, uh, come forward with, with nominations, we would, we would love to have a fully built out board. Um, I know there's been some controversy over the board, and um, I just want to say that we are very welcoming to anyone who comes on the board. We take our board membership seriously, and we have always had bylaws and, um, and, and board criteria for board members. Um, I, I think it was Helen who put it very colloquially and lovely, that you're, you're to give your time, talent, and treasure um, to be a member of the board. And it takes time, it does, but it's well worth it. Um, it takes talent, and I'm confident that anyone who is nominated will have that talent. And we operate as a nonprofit, and so it is important that people understand that part of being on a nonprofit board is both raising money and helping to raise money. It's not a chop your head off and it's over, but it is a, a hope that every board member will help in raising money because that is, that is the way we're going to be able to continue this public-private partnership that we cherish so much. <clears throat> so that's it on the nominations. Welcome to the board. Um, we we'll look forward to expand. And I'm now going to turn it over to Chris Manfredi. No. Officers. Officers. I forgot about the officers. How quickly I forget. Okay. Um, the officers of the, the board um, are nominated the following. George Murray, me, as chair. Young Park, as vice chair. Bob Gore, as treasurer. And Maggie Feller Hunt, as clerk. Um, these... Uh, these are the officers of the board. We also have a retiring chair of the governance committee, Gloria Larson, and Cheryl Cronin, who at the last minute couldn't be here tonight, 
um, is nominated for chair of the governance committee. Um, so if I could have a motion to approve our slate. Thank you, Ben. Yay. James Chan? Yay. Chris Finchin? Yay. Bob Gore? Yay. Phil Griffiths? <coughs> yep. Suzanne Lavoy? Yay. Chris Manfredi? Yay. Georgia Murray? Yay. Young Park? Yay. Helen Chinchlichty? Yay. And Mary Ann Sudan? Yay. Great. Now we're going to go on to um, the further business so part of our. Yes. Can I jump in real quick sure. before we go off of this agenda item? Um, <laughs> just a real quick question. Do we know when the next, when the date is of the next um, governance committee meeting, or is that not set up yet? Um, there, we we need to fill out the governance committee. Um, the governance committee is right now. Cheryl Cronin is the chair, um, <laughs> and uh, we we need to fill that out. There there virtually is no governance committee right now, except for Cheryl being the chair. So what we'll do is we'll fill that out and we'll figure it out. The only the only reason I bring that question up is, and I, and I think I generally agree with everything that you've said thus far about uh, making sure that we find uh, members of the board of directors who can give their time and their talent and really help contribute to um, the financial um, uh, solvency and perpetuity and <laughs> all those other great words of the Great Lake Conservancy, but uh, with all of the changes in terms of uh, Transparency for the Greenway, and also some of the challenges that you know, frankly, even Mass Dot has uh, placed upon uh, Greenway Conservancy. Could, could you speak up just a bit? Sure. Yeah, I'm sorry. Is this on? No. <laughs> okay. I turned it on. Hello. Oh, there it is. I, I was. <laughs> I was just agreeing with um, what Georgia had said before in terms of uh, new members of the Board of Directors um, giving their time um, and talent and figuring out a way to um, be able to uh, ensure um, the uh, financial soundness of uh, the Greenway Conservancy. Um, and with all of the changes that have occurred um, with the uh, uh, transparency requirements for uh, the Conservancy and the Board of Directors and also some of the challenges that frankly MassDOT has uh, placed upon the Conservancy staff and, and Board of Directors. Um, I would appreciate sort of an opportunity um, to have a fuller discussion um, with members of the Board of Directors but also more specifically with the Governance Committee um, about what is sort of what, what is our strategy, how can um, I help frankly um, in helping to identify um, uh, uh, members of the board of directors who are excited and um, um, have a lot to bring, and um, you know perhaps even some experience um, with nonprofit organizations or uh, parks organizations, that sort of thing. And so I'm just hoping that um, soon we'll have an opportunity to, to gather as the governance uh, committee um, in an open session, and also discuss this more on the board of directors, so we can make sure that we have a a full and productive board for the for the coming year. That's all. I think that's great. Um, we we really look to the other five neighborhood groups um, to to nominate, um, and the mayor and the governor have always been well open to our suggestions. And so um, I think that would be terrific. Um, you know, the, the more you know, and we're always willing to just talk on an informal basis if people wanted to talk to find out what more what we're like and whatever. So we, we want to be, to Clinton's point, open and transparent about it. We assume that there will be different processes with each neighborhood group, depending on how they operate to give their nominees. Um, but when it comes to coming on the Greenway board, we will do it in open session. Anything else before I so hastily move on? No, OK. Um, I'm turning it over to Chris. Our capable <laughs> audit chair um, for uh, the audit committee. Okay. Okay. I think um, I think I can project my voice. Um, so hopefully, if that doesn't work, I will turn to a microphone. But I think I can do that. Um, again, I'm Chris Manfredi. I'm the chair of the audit committee, and um, I've been on the Greenway now a couple of years, time flies, 
and I'm happy to be able to uh, give my time and talent uh, to, to this endeavor. Um, the way the process works is that we, um, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Downey, who's here from Feely and Driscoll. He's the partner in charge of the art and, and the work that was done. Um, I also want to introduce Lisa Schimmel, who is the uh, director of finance and was um, just starting a year ago. And so this past year has been phenomenal for um, your contribution, and I want to thank you publicly for all of your fine work and the work that uh, you've done um, in the Office of Finance, and that's been very good. Um, the draft statements are draft until the board has a chance to uh, look at them and approve them. So the draft statements have been circulated to all the board members. So um, as I talk a little bit about it, I appreciate that um, people don't really have anything to look at, but it will be posted tomorrow as soon as it's voted by the board, and um, we can have more questions later, or you can have questions tonight, and we can go through that. But I wanted to at least at least go from there. Um, this is the Conservancy's third full year of operation. I guess I hadn't really thought about the Conservancy's operation separately from the Conservancy having um, been um, underway for some time. So it's the third year, and we again have posted an increase in the net assets. Um, the increase for the year is 214,000, and that is a reflection of, um, you know, not only the, the revenue streams that um, are quite consistent with last year, but also the expenses that uh, we manage very closely. The conservancy manages very closely to make sure that we do um, balance our budgets. And uh, so, with regard to that, the largest sources of government support, of, of resources and revenues were the government support and um, private contributions. And they both are the largest and they are very similar to last year's. And so that reflects uh, the fact that we, we continue to, um, to use those as major sources for the Greenway and our, running our operation. Um, we have continued, as um, Georgia kind of alluded to a little bit, but we've continued to focus on increasing the revenue streams where we can, and we'll continue to do that as we go forward. But for the past year, um, the gala that we have annually was very successful for last year and generated um, up to 132,000 over the prior year, which is about a 44% increase over the prior year. And that's a very important event for the Greenway's um, revenue sources. Um, on the expense side, um, Approximately 75%, just just over 75% of the programmatic work spent on programmatic items, and I think that's another thing that we look at very closely when we think about um, where the money is spent and what it's spent on. And so uh, we continue to be pleased with how that works. Um, part of the programmatic items, which you will read about if you go to our website often and you know how we continue to think about this. It's relating to um, the organic landscape care that we put into it, maintenance, beautification, hundreds of, of public programs that, that uh, bring in many, many people, and the youth workforce development program, the Green and Grow, which we have, uh, and we're very pleased with that program as well. So um, the fundraising expenses um, were larger this year, and part of that is that we did have a vacancy. Uh, our director of development position was vacant the prior year, so we were very pleased. Um, and and, and um, I was going to say Julie, I knew that was wrong. Jody Wolland is here, and she's that um, that individual. And we're very pleased that she's been very helpful with um, with that that area. Um, administrative costs were essentially unchanged, um, growing less than inflation, which we all try to focus on. And um, so those are really kind of the highlights. I think the other highlight from my perspective is that it was a clean opinion. And um, in a minute we will have um, the partner of Philly and Driscoll speak a little bit about the work that they've done and, and the results that they found. But that's the most important thing and it is a, a review of the results of operations. It's um, an opportunity to make sure that the controls and procedures are in place and that the um, finances of the, of the organization are um, are running as we would all want them to be, and so we're very pleased with what we found. Um, so I know that there are board members who have seen the material. I'd be happy to answer any questions that any of you had. I think some of you have um, asked me questions on the side, so I know some of you have, have done that, but I'm happy to 
answer any questions that any of the board members have? Any materials? Good. Um, maybe now we take a few minutes for, for Mike to speak with us. If you'd like, yes. Uh, I'm back to have. Okay. I'll speak loud and rather than use the microphone. If you can't hear me, please let me know. Um, again, I'm Mike Downey. I'm the partner on the engagement from Fairley and Driscoll. Uh, we recently concluded the audit, and I'm pleased to say, as Chris alluded to, we'll be issuing an <coughs> unqualified opinion. Uh, what that means is that, in our opinion, the financial statements are free from material misstatements. So that based on the procedures that we performed and the testing that we performed on the numbers, there were no, there were no uh, misstatements that were included. In order to come to that conclusion, we do a couple of things. One is we evaluate the internal controls that exist within the organization. <coughs> um, that being said, we do not opine on the controls. So we, use, we assess the controls, and then we use those controls to come to our conclusion, but we, our opinion doesn't necessarily opine specifically on the controls in place. That being said, as part of our procedures, if we realize there were any um, significant um, deficiencies or control weak, um, significant weaknesses in internal controls, we would have a responsibility to report that to the board at this point. Uh, again, I'm happy to say that I don't have anything to report. So it was an extremely clean audit. Um, we did not propose any uh, adjusting journal entries, which for a Mid-size uh, nonprofit organization is, is fairly rare. I spent about half of my time dealing with nonprofit organizations. Uh, it's, it's what I do, and it's, it's fairly rare that I don't, we don't come back with any adjusting journal entries. So um, it, was a, it was a positive experience from my perspective. Um, this was my first year as the engagement partner. It was also Lisa's first year as having a full year under her belt and working through the, the audit with knowledge of actually what happened last year. She was involved in the audit, but with really no knowledge of um, what had occurred during the year. So um, <coughs> the audit went extremely efficiently. We finished ahead of schedule, and um, I think that that's about it. I was happy to take any questions as far as what we did or what it is that um, we're reporting on. Yeah, actually, I have a question for you, if I could. Uh, and I apologize ahead of time if this betrays more ignorance than it should. I but when you talk about the revenue side of the uh, ledger, uh, to what extent does that include or acknowledge uh, monies coming in from foundations to support the work of the? Uh, because I don't, I don't believe you mentioned that as a category. Um, there, there is a there are foundation revenues as as part of the revenue stream. Um, I introduced Lisa ahead of time, <coughs> expecting that she would also be able to help me a little bit more specific with some of the questions. Although at this point. Um, you know, we're not going to drill down on lots of them, but the foundation revenues um, are part of the total revenue stream. Yes, yeah, so foundation revenue would be included in the, in the contribution revenue. Has it been a, 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 an arc mm -hmm. up or flat or what? Dig down, right? Dig down, come up with a specific thing. I mean, I don't. But I, just I can general. certainly go back. I would say it's probably similar to what's been. Okay. Thanks for the question. I appreciate, uh, appreciate you asking that. And I think. Um, I think with all of the activity that's gone on the past year, um, it, it has been challenging. Um, and that's why, from Jody's perspective too, I think all of that has been challenging. And I think there are people that um, just continue to want to see how it all unfolds and, and, and all of the participants that, that bring revenues to the Greenway. So we look forward to next year. And um, with some of this, some solidified, we can look forward to that. Yes. Maybe I could field that one. Um, okay, um, the question was, what's happening to the business improvement district, the bid um, that you've heard us talk about for the last year and a half? Um, the legislature was very busy in July, and what they did on July 30th was change the legislation for what's called Chapter 40O, which is where the enabling legislation for a bid and they made two substantial changes. Um, they eliminated what's called the opt-out um, on, so that in the past, you've heard us say that we needed to get the abutters along the Greenway 51% in interest of the, the assessed value and 60% of the property owners um, in order to form a bid. 
that still remains, but it used to be before July that if, if you got the, the 60 and 51, then, ev then people could opt out so that you could take any building along the Greenway and that owner could say, I, I, that's lovely that you're doing a bid, but I don't want to do it. That was eliminated in the new Chapter 40O. Um, the other thing that was um, changed was their ability, the requirements for sunsetting after five years that were available <coughs> to the property owners. So they would go in, they would say they would be taxed, they would go to city council, city council would approve, and then in five years there was a way to <coughs> sunset that for the folks who were going in. That changed too, and it made it much more difficult for the, the owners to sunset the bid. Because of those two things, we are very concerned about our ability to get a bid. Um, the, um, we're cons we were concerned, you heard all our concerns before anyway about the state participation and everything else. Um, we now have another wrinkle. And so um, the states agreed to talk to the potential bid participants directly. I don't think that's been set up yet. Do you know that? No. Um, but they, they are doing that, and um, we, we are hopeful, um, but because of the legislation, we're a little less hopeful, to tell you the truth. Has there been any challenge to that uh, state law, which seems to be unconstitutional now? Um, I taxation think... Taxation without representation <coughs> by the tax government. You know, there's a lot of talk of that, Shirley. Um, I, I don't know if that will happen or not. Um, I, there is a lot of talk. Equity, I think, was one of the ones opting out. Equity opted out of the downtown bid. They were they were in serious right. discussions talking with us in the Greenway bid. Uh -huh. um, so um, it's it's hard to say. I mean, I honestly just don't know where it's going now with with the changes. Yeah, I was astounded when I heard they made that change. Yeah, that there shouldn't there must have to be legal challenges. To There's rumors. Boston is always rumors, but um, I, I don't know what, what you know, I haven't heard anything concrete. Any other questions for Chris? Yeah? Is there, any, is there any challenge in the Greenway Conservancy to the state? I know there was a lot of noise from the state about funding the Greenway, but if you look at Chicago, for example, Millennium Park, I think $170 million of public financing and the convention center here is going to be a $2 billion project. I would question the challenge in the first place. Uh, there may be a benefit to the Greenway that would overcome state funding. If you look at, again, Millennium Park as an example. Is there a body on the Greenway Conservancy considering questioning, challenging the state and the state's um, desire to pull back? And, and I go to the bid also. The bid localizes, it localizes the cost of the Greenway which again, placed the Greenway in a position of not being a world-class park. It placed it in a position of being kind of like something maybe for Bostonians. But if our goal is to create a park for people to come worldwide, the burden should be shared. It should be shared citywide at least, and possibly statewide. So I'm wondering if the Greenway has a, has a group to, to push back on the state, because I know there's squeaky wheels at the state level. Okay. Can I lead that oh, charge, Clinton, yeah. if you want to answer that? Um, I know that's not related to the audit, so <laughs> um, I, I don't mean to make light of it at all. It, it is, as far as I'm concerned, the exact right question. And I'm laughing with Clinton because I was in his office just last week talking to him about this. Um, the, uh, we submitted a five-year plan. I don't know if you've had a chance to look at it, but in the plan, we did recognize that the state might need to reduce its, its contribution, um, but we did hope that the state would stay at the table, and we honestly don't know how we will run the park if the state does not stay at the table. The, the thing that we need to do is to be a park for all, open and, and welcoming to all. And to me, I've always considered it a false choice to make it either neighborhood or state or international national. I, I've always felt like great neighborhood parks make great um, public parks and great national parks because people like to see local people interacting and they like to come and it needs to be world class in its operation and in what we put on the park. 
Um, but we need to be a real neighborhood park at the same time. So that's easier done in terms of how we operate the Greenway as a park. I mean, we, we, we're living in this split universe that most people think the park looks great and that it's getting better every year and it's getting to world class. It's not there yet, but we're getting there. Um, but everybody, this is Boston, Massachusetts, everybody has a different way of thinking how we should get there financially. Um, and it's our hope as a board, I think I speak for the whole board, almost, maybe, um, that, that everybody um, should be at the table and, and give what they can. And we are, it is what our focus will be um, in 2013. But we really appreciate the question. Can we just um, pause for a moment and ask for questions related to the audit? And I'm happy for the other questions because I think these kinds of questions come up on a regular basis. But we do want to um, just conclude the business yeah. See, this is you. why Chris is a great <laughs> audit chair. She keeps you on. So, are there are there any other um, questions for Chris or for auditor um, Michael? Um, and uh, anything? Okay, take a vote. Um, could I have a uh, yeah, motion? Do I have a second? Yes. I'll make the motion. Second. Okay. Second. And Amy will call the roll. Click the bench. James Chan? Yeah. Chris Finchin? Yeah. Bob Gore? Yeah. Phil Griffiths? Yeah. Suzanne LeBoy? Yay. Yeah. Chris Manfred? Yay. Yeah. Georgia Murray? Yay. Yeah. Young Park? Yay. Yeah. Helen Chinchlichty? Yay. Yeah. Marianne's Yay. Yeah. Uh, Marianne's left. She's officially term limited. <laughs> um, so, um, so back to any other one, just one thought. Sure, sure. Um, I want to thank you, and I, I invite you to stay. But I know that you're busy with lots of things, and if you need to leave, I'm happy to give you that opportunity. And um, the information will be posted before tomorrow the morning end of business. Huh? before the end of business. Before the end of business. And um, if anyone looks at that and has any questions, <coughs> they can come through um, Nancy's office or. Um, you know, reach us, and, and there's many ways that you can reach us, but we're happy to answer any questions that you may have about it. I just wanted to be sure that you knew that I wanted that. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, going back to what this gentleman said, when we talk about the state wanting to eliminate the funding, uh, how are we talking about Richard Davey, the Transportation Secretary? And isn't he going to be long gone in five years? I don't think it's the personal. Um, I think that, you know, Secretary Davey walked into a huge deficit. I mean, I, I think, get me wrong, I think the Department of Transportation should, should give the Greenway money. Uh, I think that's their obligation. I think they should. On the other hand, I do appreciate that if you're in Secretary Davey's position, you say, where can everybody... It's, it's bad everywhere, where can you cut? So I think this goes right to the governor. Um, I think that it goes from the governor to the secretary to us. Um, and I think that we need to, I invite you all to speak your mind if you believe that the um, Greenway should be um, funded by the state, um, both through your legislators, um, through um, any elected official. Um, I think it's time that we speak up. Oh, yes, It's not just the governor, it is the legislature. And, you know, as soon as the elections are over, hopefully, and the Senate president is okay, I mean, we are very hopeful that then the legislature will do what it needs to do in terms of taking up issue of revenues and particularly the gas tax. So, I mean, it's not just Secretary Day who's been dealt this hand. It is the governor and it is the legislature who is not willing to stand up to do what it needs to do. So, we're going to make it through November and then after that, all of us, it's not just calling the governor, it is our elected official because that is where <coughs> the revenues have to come. In. We're not going to have a long discussion about that, but I think you're right on the mark in terms of after this election, legislature and then deal with the important business at hand, this needs to be one of the first things that is on their agenda. Because otherwise, not only will it affect the green right, but it 
in terms of the mass transit that we all talk about and love and such, you know, also <coughs> can help Catholic children. And I think you're right on the mark when you say that we need to let our elected officials know. Thanks, Yes? Um, this point, maybe a uh, Hello. Yes, that's yeah. it. Thank you. Yes, hi, I'm Kumul Gupta, and this is the first time I'm coming to this meeting. Uh, but I love the conservancy and everything that it offers. Uh, my two questions were, you mentioned a figure, you said 214,000. And I was wondering that in terms of where the conservancy wants to be, the health of the, fin the financial health of the conservancy, would that, does that amount, uh, would you say that's, 25% of where you need to be? Is it 50% of where you want to be? You know, where does that stand? And my other question is, I mean, just, just it came to mind that more than transportation, I think it makes more sense for the Conservancy to be supported by the uh, DCR, the Parks and uh, Recreation um, body of the, uh, the agency of the state. So um, where do they stand with this? Okay, there's two questions. The 214 was just a difference in our net assets. Um, we, we run on about a four million five budget now. We know we need to be at about six because we're not putting anything away for replacement reserve. So the example you all hear, the Rings Fountain are now five years old. Um, and they, a lot of their component parts have a five year useful life. I mean, we are having to start replace things. So we need to start putting things away into a reserve. So our hope prior to the last three months had been that we would have two million from the state, two million from the bid, the business and the district, and two million from philanthropy. Right now, everything of that is a bit up in the air. We'll be working on all three. Um, on your other point of DCR versus Department of Transportation, um, you know, we're open to anything. It, to, to us, it's the state, um, you know, funding. And it's if, if it needs to switch to DCR in order for that to be, I think it's right now more a money issue than it is a particular agency issue. As Vivian points out, there, there isn't an agency in the state right now that has enough money to operate. And so um, it doesn't necessarily help to go, I mean, happy to if that's what people want, but it, it doesn't necessarily help to go from transportation to recreation. Yeah, because they both have been done poorly, but I think they said a little better on them. <laughs> depends on what you look at. Um, if, Ed were, if Ed Lambert were here, I'm not sure he would agree with you, but um, it's. Um, was and, I heard the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, and Bill, Bill can speak to that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so, uh, I am going to, with, with this meeting comes in two parts. Um, just one sec, Shirley, I'm going to wrap up in the next five, I just want to give you a warning, but even though the meeting's going longer, I'm going to wrap this part up in the next five minutes, um, and then we're going to take a short break. The board's going to move over to be participants, and we're going to hear great things about the public art process. Um, but we've got three or four more minutes. Matt, you got a question? Sure. I just wanted to clarify your, your prior remarks about the financial commitment of the new board members coming on, especially the ones coming from the community groups and the guidelines that the previous board had uh, put out, you know, mentioned a $5,000 number. And so two questions is, is that the financial commitment that will be expected of uh, all board members? And what happens if a potential nominee is either unable or unwilling to contribute uh, that amount? Um, the $5,000 has been the suggested amount for board members for years. Um, I don't know how many years, but I've been on the board three years. It was there when I got here. Um, so that's been a long-standing tradition. There have been some board members who have not been able to do that. It is not an off with your head. I think, I think that if someone came in and said, I am not willing to raise or give any money to the conservancy, and yet I'm somehow committed, you know, no money, that would be a problem for us. If someone said, I can work within our neighborhood, I can work with to get some things to be able to contribute to the board, we will certainly work 
with that person. I will tell you, Matt, the, my major, my bigger concern than the money, because if it, if you're thinking of the neighborhood groups, um, there's six neighborhood groups. Um, there are five thousand each. That's thirty thousand dollars. That's not. I mean, even though every thirty thousand counts, uh, you know, it would be a hard sell. That's going to make or break the conservancy. What would make or break the conservancy is having board members who weren't committed. So I'm unwilling to say that board members shouldn't have a financial commitment. Um, we're very willing to talk about what that commitment should be. Um, but the bigger issue for me is that when somebody is a member of the board, they are fully a member of the board and that we're not interested in having two different boards pretending to be one. Um, what that means to me is that when people come, whether they come from the governor or they come from a neighborhood group, they're, they're bringing their own perspective. That is what we all do with our talent and our time. We bring our own perspective. But when we take a vote, or even when we just discuss, we give our perspective, but then we listen to others and we decide what's best for the Greenway as a whole. So that it isn't always what's in it for me, it's what's in it for the whole Greenway. And I'm sure you agree, and that's, that's, what, that's a much more important to us as a board than exactly how much money is raised, although that's important. I would just ask that the board consider loosening that requirement because it does allude to pay to play. And I think especially when you're talking about community involvement, that it's not in the spirit of the, uh, the new legislation. And that, that's just my comment. Uh, I, I, I strongly object to that because the, the new legislation <clears throat> is telling us that, that we are being told by the state. I mean, it, you know, you can have the legislature over here and the state here. We're being told to raise money. Okay, so how you raise money as a nonprofit for anyone who's ever been on a nonprofit board is through board members. It is important. I don't want to downplay that it's important. I, it also is not an off with your head, but it is important. Um, we but are. But you're not answering the question. Support. You're not. You're not. It, you said that you, the five thousand dollars is immaterial, yet now you're saying that it's important. So which I'm is? I'm saying raising money is important. The $5,000 could be not a big deal to some board member and a very big deal to another. So the $5,000 itself is suggested, it has been suggested for a very long time. The, the only, there's no minimum, I mean if somebody gave a dollar, I guess that's giving something. But I mean, I think that somebody should feel as though they are participating in the fundraising for the Greenway to be a member of the board. Is that better? It, I find that to, to be a pay-to-play type type system. I don't think there should be a financial requirement to, to serve. Well, on that's your opinion, Matt. Part. You know, if, if you read, the, there was a big article in the Boston Business <coughs> Journal about it last week because of this well, that you raised, and it they, excludes a lot of people uh, that live and use the Palm Greenway that will not have this, a voice. This is talking about people who would be willing to talk to their neighbors about perhaps giving five or ten dollars among among a group of neighbors to help support the Greenway. This is not, I mean, pay to play has connotations that are not relevant to this. What's relevant to this is that, that this is a nonprofit board and it is focused on raising money in order for the Greenway to continue to be excellent. Okay, so my, my question was that whether there would be a financial commitment and I think you've answered that your, your opinion is yes. Yes. Bob? I, I'd just like to clarify something. Uh, the the, the, the pay-to-play uh, phrase suggests that there's some kind of material benefit once you get into the circus. Last I heard, uh, you know, my Divya 2 from this uh, is, is kind of low. The time I spend on this is very significant, and I'm happy to do it. I want to do it. But there is no material benefit, as you might find if you were investing funds or something like that, where pay-to-play has been used perhaps accurately to describe the relationship. Uh, but there's nothing here other than the, you know, the privilege of trying to make a world-class entity sustained and even better. So. Thank you, Bob. Um, it's, we're, we're, we're at 520. Oh. I, I would just, this is working. Um, in response to this, I guess I would also just sort of um, suggest that, 
I think the questions that we just had are indicative of the need to sort of re-examine as we move forward, you know, a number of different things about the financial status and development plans for the Greenway Conservancy. And frankly, we have a lot of work to do um, ahead of us as a board of as a member uh, as a board of directors. Um, you know, so I would just reiterate, you know, my request that you know this kind of issue. Um, be dealt with um, perhaps more fully um, at future meetings that we have an opportunity to talk more about you know what are the various um, different uh, abilities and um, specialties of members of our board of directors um, I think everybody should have an interest certainly um, in development um, we as MassDOT have asked um, the Conservancy staff as well as the board of directors to be as creative as possible um, you know, I appreciate your statements that um, the, the suggestion of $5,000, Georgia, is, is not an off with your head, but we all do have to keep in mind, um, you know, the critical um, financial needs, especially the state of good repair needs of uh, the capital assets of the Greenway um, moving forward. So I think there's probably been a bit too much um, made of this particular um, element of, um, you know, membership on the board of directors. It is something that has been um, sort of a part of past precedent. Um, and so I, you know, I appreciate your explanation that um, there was not some sort of, you know, decision made, especially after the uh, legislative, you know, latest legislation about the members of the board of directors were passed um, to ask people to get $5,000. But again, you know, I think it's something that we just need to have more opportunity to discuss and um, you know with the uh, meetings of the board of directors and this committee being open to the public in the future i think this will be a good opportunity for um, a lot of folks to you know perhaps gain more confidence in the decisions um, the good decisions frankly that are generally made by um, this board of directors and i personally look forward to being part of the discussion Okay, I'm going to call that a wrap, um, and, uh, but it's only a wrap for this business part. The best is yet to come. Um, I think that we'll start the next part in about five minutes. So this is a, this is a quick, quick pit stop break, and uh, there's, there's food and water um, over there. Please help yourself. We'll arrange, we arrange ourselves, and we'll go out with public art.